The introduction of women as surgeons was enabled by Mary Edwards Walker's Strive for Change in a Tradition. The turning point of Dr. Walker becoming the first female surgeon led to an overall shift in the viewpoint of women. During the time of the Civil War, Mary Edwards Walker inspired women to not only get involved in the medical field, but also defy the fashion stereotype and fight for equality. Women were traditionally confined to the roles of nurses in Civil War hospitals. During the Civil War, only men received the high status positions of doctors and surgeons, even if they received inferior education women. Nurses had far less status than surgeons and received minimal respect from men. The turning point between women being nurses to women being surgeons with more equal opportunities to men was Mary Edwards Walker. A revolutionary figure in American history, she defied societal norms and shattered gender barriers in the 19th century. She was not only the first female surgeon, but an abolitionist, spy, prohibitionist, women's rights advocate, and prisoner of war during a time when opportunities for women in medicine were strongly restricted. Her determination to break through gender stereotypes led her to become the first and only woman to receive the Medal of Honor for her exceptional medical service during the Civil War. Her dedication to challenging societal norms makes her an enduring icon of resilience and progress in the fight for women's rights. Mary Edwards Walker, born on November 26, 1832 in Oswego, New York, was the fifth and youngest child in a family that embraced progressive values and prioritized education. After attending Folly Seminary, she earned a medical degree from Syracuse Medical College in 1855, becoming one of the first American women to do so. Despite her qualifications, Walker faced gender-based discrimination and rejection in her pursuit of a medical career. Undeterred, she established a private practice and notably challenged societal norms through her choice of clothing. Opting for trousers and a modified military uniform, Walker deliberately rejected traditional gender roles. This defiance was not only a personal statement, but also a precursor to her groundbreaking actions during the Civil War, where she became the first woman to receive the Medal of Honor, leaving an indelible mark on history. There's the immediate, like, who are you and why are you here, right? Uh, you're a nurse, right? Because that is been more of a role that women could fill about, you know, the overcoming the, the stigma of her gender, the fact that people don't regard women as capable in that way. They don't view the battlefield as a place for women. She earns a lot of respect uh, going through all this. Again, you know, that at the end of the war, she has, you know, Sherman and Thomas, uh, two of the most acclaimed union generals in her corner, pushing for her to get recognition. Um, speaks to how well she performs her role and how much regard she has built for herself uh, over this period of time. Mary Edwards Walker's fashion choices were a bold statement challenging the gender norms of her time. During this time, women were expected to adhere to Victorian standards of dress, such as corsets, pinched waistlines, bustling full skirts, and embellished gowns. Dr. Walker wanted to wear clothing that made her job as a nurse and surgeon easier and therefore famously wore men's trousers, a frock coat, and a top hat, adopting a style reserved for men during that time. Her choices symbolized her commitment to equality and challenged social expectations surrounding women's attire. She was arrested many times for impersonating a man, even though she argued Congress had awarded her special permission to dress this way. On the front lines of the Civil War, Mary Edwards Walker, as a contract surgeon for the Union Army, played a crucial role in providing immediate medical aid to wounded soldiers. Her duties included performing amputations, treating injuries, and managing medical facilities in the midst of intense battles, such as the First Battle of Bull Run. Walker's hands-on work under fire demonstrated not only her medical expertise, but also her dedication to saving lives in a challenging environment of the battlefield. Her presence on the front lines marked a significant change in gender normalities, highlighting her courage during a difficult time in American history. A big part is in her role as a surgeon and a doctor. Um, and so as this war begins, you know, it's initially not seen as one that's going to be very big or very long and quickly it becomes the largest war that the U.S. has fought in its history. And so there's a huge need for qualified surgeons, qualified doctors, and she's you know, one of the few women who are doctors in the country at this time. She starts off volunteering uh, here kind of in a patient advocate role in hospitals outside of Washington, D.C. She becomes an advocate for women in the area as well. You know, this period, medicine is just brutal. There's not a lot of sanitation, really grisly, really nasty work that she's involved in, uh, but it is helping to save soldiers' lives. In April of 1864, Dr. Walker was captured by Confederate troops as a spy. 
She was held at the notorious Castle Thunder Prison near Richmond, the Confederate capital, for four months as the prisoner of war. During her time in prison, she refused to wear women's clothes provided to her. She was released from prison in August of 1864 as a part of a prisoner's exchange with other medical doctors. Although there is no absolute answer to how Mary Edwards Walker became a spy, some sources suggest that she allowed herself to be captured in order to spy for the Union Army. Disguised as a male surgeon, she crossed enemy lines to gather crucial information on Confederate plans and movements. She used her position as a medical professional to move freely between Union and Confederate camps, gaining access to valuable insights. On April 10, 1864, she was captured by Confederate troops as a suspected spy and taken to Castle Thunder. A lot of disease goes through these camps. Um, there is not a lot in, the, in terms of rations. In fact, she is giving credit to her survival there because she was able to bribe some guards to get raw eggs. And it's very possible um, that she was beaten as well. Her physical health is going to decline because of this. Again, things that are very common for people who are being held in some of these prison camps. As proof of Dr. Walker's service, she was awarded a Medal of Honor in November of 1865. However, some argue that Walker didn't meet the criteria for the Medal of Honor, questioning her combat actions. Others theorize she was granted the medal in place of being paid for her service in the war. No, so it wasn't intended as a bribe or a pension for So it was, okay, fine, we can't do this. We want to give her the Medal of Honor then to recognize her service. And so she had contributed in a very real and material way to the war effort, uh, like her male counterparts had. Uh, even though they weren't able to reward her with a higher rank, higher uh, pension, that sort of thing. Post-Civil War, Mary Edwards Walker continued her medical practice, establishing a medical office in Washington, D.C., and working tirelessly to treat veterans and civilians. Simultaneously, she actively engaged in the suffrage movement, participating in lectures and writing articles advocating for the women's right to vote. Walker's specific efforts included co-funding the National Dress Reform Association and defying gender norms by wearing trousers and a modified military uniform. Her persistent dedication left a lasting mark, culminating in the posthumous award of the Congressional Gold Medal in 1917 for her astonishing contributions in medicine and women's rights activism. Mary Edwards Walker's impact continued long after her death in 1919. Her legacy in both medicine and women's rights endured, inspiring generations of women to challenge societal norms. In 1977, the U.S. government reinstated her Medal of Honor, acknowledging the significance of her contributions as a contract surgeon during the Civil War. Notably, Walker refuses to give it back. Um, she's like, no, I earned this, I'm keeping it, and she wears it every day until she dies. Um, and so, you know, over time, you know, it was kind of deemed as unjust that the award was pulled from her. Beyond the field of medicine, Walker's advocacy for women's rights and fashion choices continued to influence the feminist movement. Despite facing criticism during her lifetime, Walker's courage in pursuing her passions and breaking gender barriers left a huge mark on women in medicine. Her resilience, commitment to justice, and willingness to defy social expectations made her a symbol of courage and progress, leaving a lasting legacy. I have got to die before people will know who I am and what I have done. It is a shame that people who lead reforms in this world are not appreciated until after they are dead. Then the world pays its tributes.